Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the sum and difference formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. And the first thing you need to do is you need to know the formulas. So uh, we have the sine of a. Uh, what I do is I combine them uh, because there's this nice pattern that you can follow. So sine of a plus or minus b is equal to um, sine a, cosine b, and then this is important, it's going to be plus or minus, and then cosine a, sine b. So let me just explain quickly what this means. If you read across the top, you'd have sine of a plus b equals sine a cosine b. And now when you get to this symbol, you still read across the top. So it's plus cosine a sine b. And then the difference formula, you just read across the bottom. It'll be the sine of a minus b is sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. Um, so it's a nice compact way of getting it. And you can actually do that for sine of a plus or minus b, cosine of a plus or minus b, and tangent of a plus or minus b. So that's what I'm going to do next. So cosine of a plus or minus b is, so what's nice about cosine is uh, it's just cosine, cosine, and then sine, sine, because it's multiplication, so it doesn't matter the order. But uh, usually you put the variables in alphabetical order anyway. So cosine a, cosine b. And now um, it's cosine of a plus or minus b, but here we have minus plus. So it's really important that you, uh, you know, read across the top and then read across the bottom to get both formulas. So then sine a and sine b. And finally, we have tangent. So tan of a plus or minus b. So this one's going to have both of these symbols. We're going to have the tan of a, and then it's going to be plus or minus the tan of b over 1, and now it's minus plus, so minus plus tan a tan b. Um, I don't really use the sum and difference formulas for tangent all that often, because usually... Um, in any problem where I've needed to find that, usually I've already found the sine of, let's say, a plus b, and maybe even the cosine of a plus b, so then it just makes sense to divide those two. Um, but that is the direct formula that we could use whenever we need it. So now I'm going to do two problems just to um, show you how these are used. So the first problem, I'm going to find the sine of 3 pi over 4 plus 7 pi over 6, which really means that I'm finding the sine of 23 pi over 12. So what happens with these problems is you're asked to find the sine of 23 pi over 12. You have to think of two unit circle angles that add up to that or who have a difference of that or, um, well, in this case, those are your only options. Uh, if you know the half angle formula, you could potentially use that um, and so on. So let's see. That's going to be the sine of 3 pi over 4 times the cosine of 7 pi over 6 and then plus cosine 3 pi over 4 sine of 7 pi over 6. So you have to know the formulas. If you don't know those, you're kind of sunk from uh, the first step. But if you do know those, uh, now we just have to remember some values. So this will be equal to um, sine of 3 pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. Um, cosine of 7 pi over 6 is negative radical 3 over 2. Plus, the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative radical 2 over 2. And the sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. And then I can just simplify that. So I get that as my answer for this. Um, that's a pretty standard application of these. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is a little bit different. Uh, it's actually pretty much the same, it just looks different. So if I want the cosine of the sine inverse of negative 3 fifths minus the cosine inverse of negative 5 thirteenths. Um, so this one appears to be very different, but different, but it's really just cosine of a minus b. Um, I just have to think more about what a and b are. So I'm going to start off with... Uh, a is the sine inverse of negative 3 fifths. So I think about my inverse functions. I know that has to be a quadrant 4 angle, so what I'm going to do is draw a picture uh, with a little reference triangle in the fourth quadrant, and uh, I want the opposite to be negative 3, the hypotenuse to be 5, and then the other side will be 4. And now I'm going to say that B is the inverse cosine of negative 5 thirteenths, do the same thing. So inverse cosine and it's negative, that's got to come from quadrant 2. So I'm going to draw a little reference triangle. And then adjacent will be negative 5, um, hypotenuse 13, and then the side opposite is 12. So now I can use these triangles to just read off the ratios that I need. So I have to remember what cosine of a minus b is. So cosine of a minus b is cosine, cosine, and then plus sine, sine. And now we just use our triangles to read off values. So the cosine of a is 4 fifths from the triangle. Um, the cosine of b is negative 5 thirteenths, which is pretty much given. Um, plus the sine of a from the triangle, or from the given, is negative 3 fifths. And the sine of b is 12 thirteenths from the triangle. 
And then we just simplify this, and that's our final answer. So we get negative 56 over 65. So I hope you found this helpful. That's two applications of these formulas. There are tons of applications. Um, they're really worth knowing. Uh, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.